Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So um, in this example, uh, basically what I'd like to do, show you is how to find the missing term. And for one, we're going to be trying to find y. And then we're going to go ahead and try to find x. And what's important about both of the, all of these problems is they're telling us that y varies directly with x. So y varies directly with x, y varies directly with x. So again, what does varies directly mean? Well, basically it means we can rewrite it, we can write it in a certain form, in our direct variation form. So we can write it in the form y equals kx. y varies directly with x, where k is going to be our constant. Now, they're not, we don't know what the constant is. We just know that y varies directly with x. And we know that y varies directly with x, the same y varies directly with x for both of these. Right? They both, y varies directly with x. So really, I have two equations where y, y varies directly with x. So basically, what I could do is write, so for the first one, right up here, and then the other one. OK, so they give us negative 7 here is equal to k times negative 3. And over here, we don't know what y is, but they tell us times k times 9. Now remember, though, they both vary directly with x. That means their constants are going to be exactly the same. So if I divide for the constant, to solve for the constant, basically what I have is 7 thirds is equal to k. And over here, if I divide by 9, divide by 9, um, I have y over 9 is equal to k. So remember, they both vary directly with x. That means their k is equivalent. So basically, to solve this problem, the k is exactly the same for both the y and the x. So therefore, all I simply need to do is rewrite this as 7 thirds is equal to y over 9. Now I just need to, now I just need to solve for y. And there's a couple different ways to do this. Um, one, you know, one of the easiest things I see, if I want to solve for y, I look at my y and say my y is being divided by 9. So to undo dividing, I'm just going to multiply by 9 on both sides. Therefore, that goes to 1. 9, I, before I multiply 9 times 7, I could say 9 divides into 3. That actually reduces. 3 divides into 9 3 times. Then I can just multiply 3 times 7, which is 21 equals y. So now I have found my value y. And I didn't even have to find the constant. I just knew that the constants was equal for both of them. So that's why I set both ratios equal to one another. Okay. So the main important thing is, when you have a ratio, you could go through that process every single time. Or what you could basically do is say, all right, if I have y equals kx, and if I was going to solve for my constant, then really direct variation is the same thing as y over x. And again, we have another example, y equals 25, x equals 15. What is y when x equals 6? Again, they're asking us. What is, that, um, what is that constant? Or, sorry, they're bo both y varies directly with x, so it's equal. So what I'm simply going to do is say y over x is equal to y over x. Then just plug in your information. So here I have 25 over 15 is equal to y over 6. And then again, you know, a lot of students say, oh, cross multiplication. I hate cross multiplication because um, students use it when they're not supposed to. And why use cross multiplication unless you like have to use cross multiplication. You have your variable being divided by 6. So undo that by multiplying by 6 on both sides. That goes to 1. Then you can reduce this. You can divide um, the top and bottom by 3. You can divide out uh, the top and bottom by 3. So therefore, you'll be left with um, 2. And that would be a 5. Then. Basically, you would have 2 times 25 is 50 divided by 5 equals y. And then you can reduce that to 10 equals y. Simple as this. Why go through cross multiplication if you don't have to? Um, OK, so now we have another example. Well, now instead of asking us for what y is, now we're saying, what is x? Well, again, I'm just going to go back to this ratio. It's the exact same thing. It's just now we're looking for a different variable. So I'm going to write, so I'll have Actually, I'll do this to the side here. So remember, y over x is equal to y over x. So now let's plug in the information here. I have 4 over negative 2 is equal to 6 over x. Now this one becomes a little bit more difficult because you can see that 
Now my variable is in the denominator. So I can't just simply multiply this. So there's a couple different ways to do this. Obviously, look at this, ladies and gentlemen. Any single time you have something you can reduce, reduce it. 4 divides into negative 2, negative, or negative 2 divides into 4, negative 2 times equals 6 over x. To get x off the denominator, I can multiply by x on both sides. Therefore, I'm left with a negative 2 times x equals 6. Now, to solve for x, I would divide by negative 2, and I obtain x equals negative 3. Again, I'm just using inverse operations. Okay? I'm just undoing what's happening. Get x off the bottom by multiplying on both sides, then divide by negative 2 and solve, and you're good to go. However, I know a lot of students want to see cross multiplication, so we'll go through it. And it's really, it's really the cross product that you're using. And again, we only use a cross product when we have a proportion. So if I was going to go ahead and set this one up, I would just do y over x is equal to y over x. So when I have a proportion, a ratio equal to another ratio, I can apply the cross product. And the cross product basically is doing everything that I'm doing, but it's just an, a way that's very easily remembered for students, is you circle the cross products. And basically, you're going to multiply 2 times 3 and 7 times x. So you have 7 times x is equal to 2 times 3, which is 6. Okay? Just make sure you have one product on one side of the equation and the other product on the other side of the equation. Now you go ahead and solve. So you see my variable is being multiplied by 7. So I divide by 7 on both sides. And what I obtain is x equals 6 over 7. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you solve for x and for y when you are presented with um, values that where y varies directly with x. Thanks. Hello.